now there are four groups or classes of reptiles. You got tortoises and turtles, you got lizards, you got snakes, and you got the alligators and crocodiles. Now, this next group are the snakes. I know you're looking forward to it. Let's go over here. This first snake, we usually start small and work big. We're gonna go big <laughs> and go small. This is our biggest snake. It's a Burmese python. Burmese pythons can grow 19 feet, you know, over 100 pounds easily. They eat everything in their path. And they belong in the countries of Burma and India and those areas. But in the pet trade, people used to buy these a lot. And especially in the 80s and 90s, they would buy a baby Burmese python. And they're so cute, you know, a little almost two feet. But they don't realize sometimes how big they get. These Burmese pythons are huge. And so they become very difficult. We're talking, you might need a room size cage just to keep one. So ours is only nine feet. Let's take them out. Her name is Wiggles. Oh, there you go. All right. This is our Burmese python. Now Burmese pythons are hunters, predators that like that meat, they're carnivores. In the, I don't know if you remember that storm I was telling you about, the hurricane, but in 1992, there was a bad hurricane named Andrew. And Andrew went south of Miami towards Homestead and started knocking everything out of its way. All the houses and buildings had collapsed, blown away. Anyone who had a strange pet in the house or uh, areas where there were a warehouse of these things escaped and they went into the Everglades and they loved the Everglades. It's around the same latitude on earth as where they come from and it's warm and it's wet and they can do their hunting look at his face let's look at some tools over here see those pits on his lip those pits are heat seekers even in the night when they like to hunt they can use those heat seeking missiles to track down prey and back grab it wrap around it and swallow it pythons don't have chins or all snakes they don't have chins that means they have a jaw jaw but no chin so their mouth can open three times bigger than their head to swallow something whole so the birds in florida and the everglades raccoons possums all those are food items and these guys have been wiping them out pretty fast and so these are another invasive species that don't belong in florida but now they're here so that is a burmese python pretty big okay now i'm not going to roll on the grass with it and have a wrestling do that but uh i'm gonna go ahead and put her down thank you wiggles right. see if i can do this Whee. all right and this is just her holding pen so she gets back home all right so we have some quite a bit of snakes here in florida we got king snakes horn snakes mole uh, snakes all kinds of snakes here red line or red neck to red neck redneck snakes and we got all kinds of cool stuff let me uh, bring you over here this is a corn snake we keep them in bags to protect them a lot of people say why do you put snakes in bags well if a snake was in a bin he'd go up to the top and rub his nose back and forth tearing it up so a, uh, a pillowcase is a good carrying tool but it keeps the snake from hurting themselves and they feel kind of secure in there let me take them out for you. This is a corn snake. Corn snakes are usually reddish in color. And corn snakes here are very friendly for the most part. And they get that name corn snake because of the Indians. You know, the Indians used to see them out there in the corn. And they thought they were eating the corn. They weren't eating the corn. They were eating the mice and the rats that were eating the corn. So farmers learned that uh, seeing these snakes in the fields, seeing these snakes in the barn, was a good thing. And you can see it. Well, what's that thing coming out of his mouth? That's a tongue. You know what they use their tongue for? Not for attacking. They use their tongue to smell. They just lick the air. Any molecules, any scent of a rat or a mouse, they can pick it up and follow it. And they use that to smell. Isn't that weird? Can you imagine if you had the smell with your tongue? You'd be like, um, Hey, mom's baking brownies in the kitchen. 
kind of weird. But that is a corn, and he is a constrictor just like the python. Grabs his prey, wraps around it, swallows it whole. And they are great for keeping down the mice population. All right, so that is a corn snake. You know, there are many reptiles here in Florida, and some of them are native, and some of them are invasive. They don't belong here. But this next animal is famous, king of the swamp. He definitely belongs in Florida. I'm talking about the American alligator. The alligator is a reptile that has adapted to the swamp life. And I'm gonna show you. Our alligator is from the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. He's on loan. When he gets about four feet, we gotta take him back because he'll be too big and too strong. So I'm gonna take him out for you. His name is Dr. Goodbite. Now let's take a look at him. Come on, sweetie. Oh, you hear him hissing? That's a warning saying, don't mess with me. I have a strong bite. Remember we said out of all the bites in the animal kingdom, the crocodile was number one. Even at this size, if he bit me, it would hurt a lot. So we always go to shows with tape on his mouth because all his muscle is for closing, not for opening. It doesn't take much to keep his snout closed, okay? But he's got a lot of things here on him. His tail, not only do I gotta watch out for his mouth, Gotta watch out for that tail. It's really strong. But let's look at his feet. They're webbed like a duck so he can swim. And his eyes are on top of his head so he can see what's on the water. They're shaped like a cat so he can see at night. And he's got two gray colors, swamp and sky. If I was a, an eagle looking down for a baby gator to eat, this would be hard to see on the water. If I was a hungry fish underneath him looking up, I'd see white clouds and blue sky. That would be hard to see. So these colors protect the baby. Uh, but this reptile has one thing that none of these other reptiles have, and that's a mama. Out of all the reptiles, it's the gators and the crocodiles who take care of their babies as long as they can. And the mama offers protection to the babies until they're big enough to be on their own. When they're about three feet, they're on their own. And that's Dr. Goodbye. Look at those teeth. Can you see them? Woo! Yep. Good job. So Dr. Goodbye is an alligator and hits a reptile. Thank you, Dr. Goodbye. All right. Well, let me show you one more invasive species. This guy is found in Homestead. There's a lot of invasive species in Homestead. I've been there a couple times, and I'm just amazed at what I see. But one of them, which I think are kind of cool, are the Bufa marinas toads, okay, the cane toads. These toads came over from Cuba. They grow big. I mean, maybe the size of a dinner plate big. They eat everything in their path, including other frogs and toads. So this is a toad that's doing really well down there, and they've been heard to, uh, somewhere as far as north as Orlando in the, in the gutters of Disney World. You know, we hear them down in the drain sometimes. So these toads are slowly spreading north, but they probably won't go too far north because of the temperature changes. But that is a big toad. Now I'm gonna to try to take him out so you can get a nicer view of him. Let's see if he doesn't jump away from me. Hold on. Woo! All right, let's take a look. Now he's closing his eyes, all right, and he's going, what you doing here? All right, and oh, I think he's peeing on me. That's a defense, frogs pee. Now he's not a reptile, this is an amphibian. Frogs, toads, salamanders are amphibians, okay? And they need the moist, they need the moisture, the water to survive. And so uh, you'll always find them near water or in the water for those, for those creatures. That's pretty cool. And he just gulps things down, he grabs it with his tongue and pulls it right in. Crickets right now is what he eats. Ooh, he's got strong legs, pretty cool. You see those little sacs on his neck? Those are poisonous glands. Yeah, if they start turning milky white, he's releasing a toxin. If a dog sees this and starts grabbing it and swallows it, it could choke the dog. So these are actually very dangerous for uh, our local pets if they play around with these things. So we have to watch it. 
All right, no, he's just puffing up, but he knows I'm not gonna hurt him. So I'm gonna put him back. Thank you very much. All right, well, of course, always remember to wash your hands after handling reptiles, okay? Things like lizards, uh, like the iguana can carry things like salmonella. You know how you cook your chicken to kill germs? These things are natural on reptiles, you know, dirty water, things like that. So you gotta wash your hands to kill the germs if you touch a reptile. So safety, safety first. So I hope you enjoyed our little journey around the uh, backyard here of Wild Wonders. And we hope that you uh, take time to appreciate nature around you, enjoy what you have in your uh, parks, in your neighborhood, um, that you next time see a turtle cross the road. Oh, by the way, why the turtle cross the road? To get to the Shell Station. <laughs> it never gets old. All right. So. Uh, that you take the time to enjoy them and understand how long it took for them to evolve the way they are and the tools that they use to survive. And uh, for you kids out there, um, there's a book called The World's Sneakiest Reptiles. It's a great book. And they got all these cool little facts about reptiles. One of them I want you to see if you can find is a lizard that belongs here in Florida, but it looks like a snake. What's its name? And what does it do to protect itself? So see if you can find that out in that book. So if you want to go online and, and uh, take out that book from the library, that would be called cool. World's Sneakiest Reptiles. Well, I'm Mike Rossi. I'm here from Wild Wonders. I hope you enjoyed our program today. Stay tuned for other great things coming down the pike. And we appreciate your time.